Howdy guys, Pastor Josh here for our Wednesday midweek devotion. Uh, it's been a neat day today, uh, as I sit here record this Wednesday afternoon. Uh, it's about an hour until we launch the SpaceX rocket from Florida, so I'm uh, watching that and I look forward to seeing that uh, here in a little bit. As we get into our devotion, uh, we're going to be in First Peter chapter 4, and we'll talk about First Peter at the book, but specifically I want to look at chapter 4 and I'm going to read... Uh, starting at verse 12. So if you want to follow along. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly? And the sinner. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful Creator while doing good. And this is God's word. So Peter writes to a group of Christians who are under persecution. It's right at the end of Nero's reign, and things are rough and difficult for them. And you've got people who are being persecuted because. They are Christians. Now, we are in a time right now where we are um, suffering. There's uncertainty. We are in a situation that we did not sign up for. So it's not exactly the same as the people in that day and time, but we can relate to that, right? That things are not going the way that they should and the way that we feel that they should be. And one of the reassurances that God gives in his word in those difficult times, in days of darkness, God gives the comfort and strength through a simple statement, I am with you, right? He says it to Isaac in Beersheba in Genesis chapter 26. He says it to Moses at the burning bush, right? I am with you. He says it to David in the 23rd Psalm, I am with you. Uh, and he tells it to the disciples right at the end of Matthew, right? Lo, I am and with you always to the very end of the age. And I don't know how you are. I'm an answers guy. I'm a data guy. So I want to know everything. I want to have all the information before I make a decision. Uh, I, When I talk to God, I'm like, God, tell me this, show me this, reveal, you know, t tell me what's going on. And often God's response to our request for more information, more answers, you know, more is, uh, look, it's not time for me to give you answers. Here's what I can promise you, though. I'm with you. I give you not answers, but the promise of my presence. And uh, that presence and that promise matters because we know the one who gives it to us. We know that it comes from him. And so knowing that he's the one who with us, that is with us, leads us forth into the life that is before us leads us forth into the challenges that we have to face and and, and it's it's assuring and scripture over and over again it, it gives us different illustrations of this right so when we walk through the valley of deep darkness when we are defenseless as sheep he he's the shepherd right in psalm 23 he's he's the good shepherd in 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 john when we are alone and lonely and we feel like nobody accepts us we feel like nobody has any use for us he calls himself our redeemer right and he makes us a part of his family and when we feel small and vulnerable and afflicted in a dangerous world he calls himself the creator that we read a moment ago let those who suffer according to god's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good small, vulnerable, afflicted. That describes what the original recipients of Peter's letter, how they were feeling. They were grieved by various 
trials. They didn't know what kind of suffering would descend upon them next. And, and they had this thing going on, and it's a theme throughout Peter, but they were afflicted. They had a world that maligned them. They had a flesh that besieged them, and they had a devil that stalked them. And into that fear and that uncertainty and that pain, Peter gives a promise. And he told them that they were God's people. He, he told them that God told, I am with you in chapter 2. And now he lifts their eyes above the trials, above the enemies, above heaven and earth to remind them that God calls them his people and God is their faithful creator. Uh, and he tells them, the God who walks with you uh, is not only your savior or your redeemer or your Lord, but he's also the maker of the mountains, the crafter of the skies. And if you've been bought by the blood of Jesus, know this, that creator is not only mighty, but that creator is faithful to you. No matter who you are, even the smallest, even the most vulnerable, even the most harshly afflicted, God is with you. And so, if God is our creator, and if God is with us in our suffering, he will continue to guide us and direct us. First of all, God governs all of creation, highest to lowest, furthest to nearest, from the orbits of the moons in unseen galaxies to just, I don't know, if you're here in, in southeast Texas, uh, we, we had rain last night. We had big old fat rain last night. And I remember I was on the back porch and uh, I was just watching it and listening to the thunder and listening to the lightning. And um, there, there's something kind of beautiful about it. And the same God who controls and owns the galaxies uh, was also there in the midst of that uh, and displaying his power and displaying his authority over nature. And um, it was just a neat thing to kind of sit on the porch and, and consider. The suffering of Peter's audience, uh, they were suffering and they were in situations where they didn't feel like they deserved it. And that level of persecution, as I mentioned earlier, is something that thankfully, and it's a blessing, that those of us in the West in 2020 and, and forward, we're not going to experience that kind of religious persecution, I, I pray. Um, but we still got problems. We, we still got people who are cruel to each other. We still have friends who betray one another. We still have seemingly random acts that happen and... Um, we got a virus going on that appears ungoverned and they seem like arbitrary menaces in an arbitrary world. But here's what Peter reminds us that everything, every creature, everything animate or inanimate behind that, there is a creator and that creator is in charge. What does God say to the seas in the book of Job? Thus far shall you come and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. So he has dominion over the seas. He has dominion over our suffering as well. And he, he has us in his hand. And even in the midst of our uncertainty, know uh, that, that God is there. So God has that sovereignty as creator over creation and not just over creation, but about us individually. And you need to consider that as well. Our souls, which feel so fragile, um, but we are in his arms and he is omnipotent. That means all powerful and no suffering can reach into those arms and separate us from God. Peter says in chapter 1, By God's power you are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So in all of our afflictions and in all of our fears and all of our sorrows and all of our uncertainties, the power of God uh, is there guarding us and keeping us not from suffering itself, but from anything in the suffering that would destroy us, anything in the surf suffering that would separate us from him. Right? He's our creator in birth. He's our creator in new birth. And he will not forsake the work of his hands. And that's the power 
that undergirds the promise, and it's in chapter 5, and I'll read it here. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And so even before all this happened, even before the Wuhan coronavirus hit, I said the word, just got demonetized, it happened. We're in the little while right now, and we were before. Our creator will bend down into the dust and will put breath back into the children of men. And and once again, this is before the virus even. Par the paralyzed will walk again and the blind will see again and scarred skin will feel again. And every broken heart will be put back together. And every wound will be healed. Every wound seen and unseen, will be bound up for eternity. And our Creator has every ability and in every intention to make all things new and to put us and place us into a world where suffering it does not exist anymore. That's His promise. So, have you ever met a Christian, and I, I, I ask that rhetorically, I think we all have, but, but someone who just you can tell by the way they carry themselves that they trust God as their faithful creator and, and they're just walking in it. You know, my, my grandpa was like that. Um, and you know that they've been through some stuff. You know that they've walked through suffering. And yet they know the abiding peace of Jesus Christ. And they walk through that suffering with an eye toward others. And it, Peter writes it, Let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good and having entrusted their souls to the safekeeping of their faithful creator they have found sorry i got a motion thing here that turns off the lights okay we're back i'm not going to cut we're going to keep going and they've entrusted their souls to the safekeeping of a faithful creator they found the courage to pick up the pieces of their lives and places where they've been damaged and they hand them over to jesus and they trust that he's able to take what is broken and use it to nourish people and, and to fix things. And they'll speak comfort into the lives of people. They'll reach out to people with their scarred hands. Uh, and they'll, they'll serve wounds that cannot be seen. And they will speak. And they will reach. And they will serve. And they will bring the treasures of God to others in a jar of clay. How come? Because the creator of the stars keeps them as the apple of his eye, and they know it. And because the architect of the earth counts every hair on their head, and they know it. Uh, and because the maker of the mountains holds their souls in the hollow of his hand. And with him they are safe. And brother, sister, with him we are safe as well, even in uncertain times and even when we have questions. So I'll commend that to you as some thoughts and, and just continue to consider that. Talk it over. Talk it over with your family, with, with your loved ones, and um, keep checking us in on this idea that the creator of the universe is with you and leads you and guides you and is in control even in the midst of these uncircumcised uncertain times. Uh, and so uh, thanks guys uh, for being here. I'll see you Sunday one way or the other, either in person at worship here uh, or watching remotely. I know we had some hiccups and uh, some challenges with the technology stuff this weekend. Uh, we're just, we, we're going to keep working on it. We're going to keep plowing through and um, we're going to keep putting the word of God out there so that you can have it, uh, so that you can rejoice uh, and so that you can worship in him. And so uh, I commend that to you. I commend him to you and I commend you to him. And, and that's going to be my prayer for you going forward. And you guys are in my prayers and uh, I look forward to the time when we'll be together again. So uh, have a good rest of the week. God's blessings. Stay frosty and I'll see you soon.